Hi you guys, my name is Alyssa and today I will be doing a short demo on SonicPy. So SonicPy is actually a program that you can use to learn to code by creating your own music or songs. So something that I also found really interesting and why this program stood out a little bit more to me was that it is based on the programming language Ruby, which is actually the last language that we are learning for this class that I'm making the video for, 372. So what I decided to do to get started is I decided to pick a song to focus on and I picked Heart and Soul and if you don't know it, I'll play a little bit right here. So usually I play this on my left hand, first note is a C, so all I'm going to do here is play C. So if you notice the pattern, we do have a couple of C's and then we go up to an E. And I'm also going to cut out a lot of this footage. I'm just going to play what I have just to show you guys. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Like this sounds a little like hard. This is really useful for is sometimes I can't play piano parts and scene at the same time just because sometimes timing is really weird. If I play it's all together so we need to break it up right like that's how the song is what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to add some timing in between let's now just do five seconds and then let's see what happens we need to have this go down an octave so what i do is i'm just gonna put this and see that sound Okay, and then I messed that up. That's how you go down in octaves, you just add the numbers because the piano has different octaves. Again, I'm just kind of like referencing it to the piano. This is a C, this is a C, 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 so they're all numbered. And the timing is also weird. We notice that we're getting a little pattern here. Perfect. I'm just gonna go ahead and add the rest of the notes here. So I've added the rest of the notes and when I click run, you'll notice that it automatically formats my code. It's just like regular programming. You don't want to write redundant code. Um, I wouldn't just copy and paste this however many times I needed. What I can actually do is I can put all of this in a loop. You can do something like loop it for five times. So you could do something like this. You could do five times do just like in Ruby. You're going to have to end that loop. And again, it's going to reformat it. Oh, bad syntax. So just like in Ruby. Just like in Ruby, you're going to have to end that loop. Due to time, we're just going to do a loop like this. This is going to loop it until I tell it to stop for now. I would like to create a function so that way I can better organize my code. So to define a function, we do define. I'm going to call this just left hand for now. And then we're going to put all of this in. And we also have to end the function just like in Ruby. We also have to make sure that we call it. I'll show you guys that assert statement. If it's something that's false, it will not execute. There you go, because the assert failed. That's gonna be useful for later, I presume. Now we're gonna do the right hand, and I'm actually gonna just put this below here for now, and you will see why shortly. So I'm setting it up for the right hand now, so the right hand's gonna go something like this. And then it goes up a little bit more. Again, due to time, we're gonna just start writing it. And then I'm gonna look at my timing here. I think this is gonna be a little longer. This next one's shorter. So we're already getting an issue, but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of write out the rest of the right hand. Okay, so this is the rest of my right hand. Let me just comment this left hand out for now. Okay, cool. So we have our right hand. We're going to want to loop this as well. We're not going to finish it quite yet to make sure that it loops. So let's go ahead and run the code now. And I'll comment this and then run the code. So we already noticed something that's odd. This loop is not is not going and because this one's going to go forever, it's just the second loop is never going to get touched. Another thing that we can do here and is going to be needed here. So I'm actually going to put this left hand in the in thread. So what in thread does is it makes it so both loops can actually play at the same time. Now that we've in threaded the left hand, um, we're going to go ahead and play this and then see how this turns out. where I stopped it. So this is what I have and I also want to put this right hand just because if I had more time I would like to add way more to this. 
now that we would just do right hand. And what I thought, what was confusing to me about the in thread is that you only, I guess, put one like thing in there. You don't, I thought you would have to put both functions, but you don't have to. Okay, so now that we have our left and right hand, what we're gonna do is just add one more thing because I wanna use variables. And so we're gonna create some chords. And so I'm just gonna call this a C chord. And then this is how you format it as a chord. I'm gonna give the octave that it's gonna start at. This is gonna be a major. So we're gonna have something like this. So that's what we want here. So I know that the first one's gonna be a C chord. We'll do an A chord. This will have to go down one more octave because we're going under the C. Okay, so because we have an in thread, we're gonna have to use in thread again since we're adding in something else. So I'm just gonna copy this and then I removed that right hand call and then I'm just gonna do right hand call here. Now we can use our new function where we're gonna call our chords. So this will just, I'll just call this chords and then end that. Now we're gonna play the C chord and it's gonna be the exact same setting as before. We named our variable C chord, the C chord. We'll just sleep for like one second. We're just gonna call chords at the end now. So let's just see if we get that first chord. Yeah, so you can hear it a little bit. And I chose that octave so you can distinguish, you know, that difference. Let me just add a couple more. So we need C, A, and then F, and then back to G chord. So these are all gonna be the same octave. It's gonna copy this, A, F, G. And we might, our seconds might be a little off, but let's just give it a go. But you can hear it. This sounds the best, so let's go ahead and give it a shot. I feel like that A sounds a little bit better on real piano. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is just put this one in a loop as well. And we've seen this before. What I wanted to do, which is something you, you could do, but I don't have enough time to show you guys, you can have this loop start later, so that way you can give these first two a go and then add the chords later so it like, makes it a little bit more interesting so you're not always playing the same thing. And there you go, there's our little song. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this gave you a good idea of how this program works and the things that you can do with it. I really think it would be a great way to start understanding those concepts about variables, setting up your functions, how to call them, setting up loops. I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you so much.